equation through some law okay and once you know that relation you need to know that how using that relation you can compute what you call the rates of uh, those two quantities and once you know the rate of those once you know uh, once you have a relationship between the rates then just you know identify that which of the quantity is easily measurable experimentally so while solving the problem question uh, problems of for example uh, say book or exercises you don't have to worry about it because most of the things would be known to you okay but it's not difficult to apply this to you know something that is that is that is practical okay so there you need to experimentally verify or observe one of the quantity and then try to calculate the other quantity which is seemingly difficult so let's do some more problems so i'm going to do i'm going to work out some of the problems for you and then i'm going to give you some problems to you to work out and i'm going to do seemingly some of very interesting non trivial kind of problems so let's do some more problems so so imagine a situation imagine you have a wall okay so this is say the wall and this is what you call the ground okay this is wall and this is ground and imagine you have a ladder actually a cd head so you have this ladder cd you know which has been placed for example at some height for example so so which has been placed with the wall actually okay which, which which has been placed at the wall and imagine we we know that uh that the ladder is is uh, y meters high okay so so this distance between you know the bottom and the top of the ladder is really what do you call uh, a high or you can say that ladder is y meters high and say this distance is um is is x meters so in other words the ladder the, the bottom of the ladder is away from this central point okay uh, x meters and the top of the ladder is away from this central point where are the bottom of the wall you know by y meters so i have wall and i have ground and this is the point of intersection of the wall and the ground and y is the distance between the top of the wall and this intersection where are the base of the wall and x is the distance between um say the of uh, uh, the bottom of the wall at the uh, the bottom of the ladder the base of the ladder and the bottom of the wall actually so this is the distance and imagine that this is known to you that that the length of um the entire ladder is 10 meter actually so let's assume that the, the length of the entire meter is 10 letter so here are the questions that i would like to ask so here are the questions are maybe here is the situation that i am interested in knowing so imagine imagine the bottom of the ladder slides away theek okay? hai so farz kar lete hai ki ye ye jo ladder hai ye slip ho raha it slides away so when the bottom of the ladder will slide away okay this x distance will increase for sure think about it so if the ladder comes here for example the bottom of this distance between the base and the bottom of the ladder would increase and this distance would decrease actually and this so if if this keep, if the ladder keep on sliding agar ye slide karta rehta hai to eventually what will happen is that this the top of the ladder is going to fall and hit the bottom of the wall and then you know um, this distance between the wall and the ladder the ladder is going to be equal to what you call 10 okay 
सो हो क्या रहा है आपके पास एक सीढ़ी है सीढ़ी की बेस स्लिप अवे हो रही है सो वंस इट इज स्लिप स्लिपिंग अवे दिस डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द बेस एंड द बॉटम ऑफ द वॉल वुड इंक्रीज व्हाइल दिस डिस्टेंस वुड डिक्रीज एक्चुअली सो इफ वन ऑफ द रेट इज गिवन टू यू फॉर एग्जांपल ये बता दिया जाता है यार ये नोन है आप या ये ये एक्सपेरिमेंटली मेजर कर देते हैं कि ओवर द टाइम हर सेकंड में दिस लैडर इज और द टॉप ऑफ द लैडर इज कमिंग डाउन एट व्हाट रेट द क्वेश्चन इज कैन आई फाइंड दिस रेट बाय व्हिच दिस डिस्टेंस इज इंक्रीजिंग और ये भी हो सकता है कि फॉर एग्जांपल इफ दिस इज गिवन टू मी that the, the, the between the bottom uh, the, the rate at which the x is increasing either this distance is increasing agar ye given ho to can i find the rate at which the ladder is coming down or 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 uh, the rate at which this distance is decreasing okay so if one of the rate is known to me then can i you know what do you call find the other rate so this is what is really the situation actually so 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 for example so it is given to me so if bottom of the ladder so here's the thing bottom of ladder okay slides away away at say 1 feet per second fast kar le ye jo distance hai so so this slides away at 1 feet per second so iska matlab ye hai ki this distance is increasing at the rate 1 feet per second the question is how fast the top of the ladder will slide down okay so this is given to me the question is how fast the top of the ladder top of the ladder uh sliding down sliding down theek hai <coughs> to the wall as uh, to the bottom to the ground if it is known to me if it is known that that what ladder is 6 feet high ladder is 6 feet high okay so we have been given ke first kar le ladder is 6 feet high or like this guy is increasing or the base of the uh, uh, what do you call uh, the ladder is slipping okay at the rate 1 feet per second then what would be the rate at which the top of the ladder is coming down to the ground at what rate so this is what that we need to try to figure out that. so as i said what would be the step 1 the step 1 is done we have already made the picture okay the step 2 is to give the names this is also done as i have given this distance a name x and this distance a name y and what was the step 3 so here's the interesting thing what was the step 3 try to find the relationship between the related quantities now when you are looking at this picture is it giving you some kind of glimpse actually think for a moment you know you may pause the video for a second actually and 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 think about that can you see a relationship between x y and 10 the answer is yes that this is like a right angle triangle so if this is like a right angle triangle then there must be a relationship between all three and that relation is what you call the pythagorean theorem so by pythagorean theorem base square plus perpendicular square is equal to the hypotenuse square actually which is equal to 100 Okay. Now what you need to do well, now what we need to do is to try to find what do you call um 
So maybe the step four is to identify what is given to me and what is uh, unknown actually. So the first thing that is given to me is that the ladder slips away. In other words, this distance is changing over the time at one feet per second. Okay. And the second thing is that I need to find that how the y is decreasing, that is, this distance is decreasing, you know, per second. And it is also given to me that as initial condition that the this ladder is in is initially six feet high. So in other words, y is what do you call six? And then what is our task? Our task is to what do you call this to find this actually. And let's do it. So what would be the what would be the what would be uh, the dy by dt? So what should be the next step? The next step should be the step five should be try. So as there is a relationship between x and y, try to find using chain rule a relationship between uh, the rates dy by dt and dx by dt. So what should I do if I want to do this actually? So I can do this that take this equation and differentiate both sides with respect to time. So the differentiate x square with respect to the time plus differentiate y square with respect to the time and differentiate 100 with respect to the time so this would be 0. And here I need to apply chain rule because I can't differentiate x square with respect to time so what can I do is that I can do dx by dt so just divide and multiply by dx or apply chain rule and the derivative with respect to dt of y square times y and dy by dt equals 0. And now I can say that this would be 2x dx by dt plus 2y dy by dt equal to 0. And if I divide, for example, everything by 2, so you're going to get dx by dt plus y dy by dt equal to 0. So I got a relationship between what you call rate at which the distance between uh, the rate at which uh, the ladder is slipping and the rate at which the ladder is coming down. So I got the relationship between these two rates. Now what I need to do, I need to find, so I need to find this dx by dt. But what is given to me, or dy by dt, what is given to me is this dx by dt. So this is given to me. Also the value of y is given to me. So in order to find the dy by dt, I also need to have the value of x actually. But this is not difficult. Why? Because if you know the relationship between x and y, and you know the y at one point, you can easily calculate the, the x at other points. In other words, if in this equation, if I substitute x square plus y equal to 6 square equal to 100, okay, I can compute what you call x, and x would turn out to be so 100 square minus. 36 square is going to be x square equal to 64, so the x would be 8 actually. So the x would be 8. And now I can substitute the values. I can say that this is going to be 8 times dx by dt, which is 1, plus y, which is 6 feet, times dy by dt. And if you simplify, what you're going to get? You're going to get dy by dt equal to minus 8 by 6. dy by dt is going to be, ah, no, so it's, so it's, this is 6 and this is 8 actually. So this is going to be 6 by 8 feet per second. So the question is, does this answer make sense? 
what would be the meaning of this answer? Keep in view that dx by dt is 1 feet, so it's a positive quantity. So this, this, is, this shows that x is increasing actually. In other words, this distance is increasing. While the dy by dt is a negative quantity. And when a derivative of a quantity is negative, we know that that quantity decreases. So the y is decreasing and hence we can see that as x in increases, the y would decrease. y has to decrease actually because the ladder is rigid. Okay? And it makes sense actually that dy is by dt is minus 6 by 8. So you can see that how beautifully following these steps and the given piece of information, you can solve the problems. So again, we followed the step. The first step was to make a picture, leading the question and making a picture. So I read and I made a picture. I identified the quantities, named the quantities, so I named the quantities x, y, and then. And then step three was how the quantities are related with each other. So using the Pythagorean theorem, I said the quantities are related with each other in this manner. And then, using this equation, relation, can, can we know the relationship between R, the step 4 is what is given to you and what is unknown. So it, it was given to you that the ladder is sliding away at the rate 1 feet per second and your task is to find what you call um, the, the rate at which the, um, the rate at which uh, 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 the ladder is you know coming down what, while it is given to me that the ladder is six feet high so if like you identified what is known and what is unknown to you and then finally you by chain rule you try to find the relationship between the rates which we did and then you know we, we substituted the given pieces of information and we got the R required rate so that's how you have to attempt problems most of the time, actually. Okay. Let's do another problem. So, so I'm going to attempt some of the problems for you. Okay. Then your task would be to solve some more problems. I would suggest that after watching this lecture open the book and try to solve these problems for yourself first solve these problems for yourself okay and then try to attempt the exercises actually so once you're going to solve these work problem that i'm doing you know you will get a confidence actually and uh, uh, so and, and and then you know when you're going to attempt the exercises you can do things more easily Okay. <clears throat> so here's the next example. So let's call this example as example three. Okay. <clears throat> example three. So what does the example three talks about? So the example three that suppose you have a water tank but that water tank has a shape of an inverted cone actually. So imagine I have a water tank of this form. Okay? Of this form. So this is like a water tank of this form. And assume that there is some water already into it and you are pouring this water you are pouring more and more water into the tank actually. Okay? You are pouring more and more water into the tank. So, once you are pouring more and more water into the tank, what do you call, the, the, the water will, what do you call, fill the tank. So, the volume of, the, the water will occupy more and more volume in the tank actually. Okay? more and more volume in the tank and uh, and uh, and the empty space will decrease actually so another interesting thing about uh, the cone 
is that unlike the sphere or the circle, okay, where the all points from the middle have the same distance, here, you know, the radius is changing actually all the time. So, so, so the lower part, so, so since, since this is a circular cone, so the lower part of the circular cone has a smaller radius and as you go up, the radius of the cone increases more and more and more actually. Okay. So let's, let's give, for example, these quantities some name. Okay. So say, say, let's say V is the volume of um, cone. Okay. V is the volume of water inside, okay, and R is the radii of uh, surface of the surface of the circular cone of this surface, okay. And say H is the height, okay? So it is the height of one. So this is step one. So, so the water has volume V, okay? And uh, the cone has the radius R, but we need to, as I am saying that, to keep in view that this radius would increase, you know, you know. The, the upper part of the cone has more and more capacity to you know uh, to to fill in the water than the lower part because the lower part has lesser radius and the upper part has what do you call um, the higher radius actually okay so the r is going to be smaller in the you know in the in, in the in the in the bottom of what do you call um, the cone and as you move up the radius would increase actually and here is going to be the maximum radius for example okay and let's say the h is the height of the cone is it the height of the cone yes it is the height of the cone H is not height of the cone, but height of water at time t. Okay. Let's assume it is also given to me. So what we did first, first of all, first of all, we kind of um, kind of made a picture of it that I have a cone. You know, a circular container, a, 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 a container of the water uh, of, of the cone shape and I am pouring the water into it. So once you are pouring the water into it, the water level is increasing. Okay. The, the V is the volume of the water inside the cone, R is the radius of the surface and H is the height of the water at any time, what do you call T. Now the question is how this V, R and H are related with each other. Okay. So that so this is this is a step one. I'm reading and I'm fetching these information out of it. This is a step two. And step three is known to me that the volume of the cone is pi upon three. Y upon 3 R square H. So this is the relationship between what do you call V, R and H. Okay. Now what was the step 4? Step 4 is that okay what pieces of information is given to you about these quantities in your given for example problem. So the pieces of information that are um, 
given to me is that is that that this base of the corner okay this base of the cone or the top of the cone has a radius 2 meter or 2 centimeter 2 uh, two, 2 meter yes this is 2 meter and the height of the cone is 4 meter okay the radius of the the top the top of the cone okay of the container is 2 meter and the height is 4 meter keep in view that v r and h are the volumes and radius and what do you call the height of the water at any time t actually while while this the radius of the base of this cone or the top of this cone is fixed and height of this is also fixed actually so this is this is given to me okay so i put this information into the picture actually now it has been given to me that if the water is being pumped into the tank at the rate 2 cubic meter per minute so we are putting the water into the uh, what do you call uh, this cone at the rate 2 meter 2 cubic meter per minute actually so this means that the volume is increasing the rate at which the volume of the water is increasing over the time is 2 cubic meter per minute okay find the rate at which the water level is rising Okay. find the rate at which the water level is rising so the rate at which the water level is rising so that means that how high the water is becoming over the time so how high would be denoted by dh by dt so let's call this this is something that is unknown to me when the water is 3 meter deep so, the, so it is given to me that for example initially initially water is 3 meter what we call deep actually so this is these are the pieces of information that are given to me this is piece of information this is also piece of information that is given to me and our task is to find dh by d okay now what we should do as i said this height is arbitrary the height of the water is arbitrary and it is h while this height is fixed which is called the 4 centimeter actually Okay. Now, if I say, for example, draw an axis, so let me draw an axis that passes through it, the middle of the cone, then you're going to get this picture. Okay. Then you're going to get this picture. So now I'm, I'm moving towards what do you call the step 5. The step 5. So that in, in order to find the step 5, uh, V, its rate is given to me, H, X rate is uh, that we need to find, but there is no rate of uh, the radius is given to me actually. In other words, that rate of the radius of the water level actually. Okay, but this is not given to. Me. But the question is, you know, wouldn't that be so? So in other words, one quantity depends on two quantities. So if I can have, I mean, I can solve this problem very easily. So if these two quant, instead of having these two quantities, if we can have, say, for example, one quantity. Okay we can have what do you call one quantity so if, and that quantity should be h because we are interested in finding the h actually 
So the question is, can I express the R in the terms of the H? The answer is yes, actually. And how can I do it? I, I, I can use what you call the theory of similar triangles. I mean, if you see, these two triangles are similar. And recall, what do we mean by two similar triangles? By two similar triangles, I mean that if this is ABC,